Good afternoon, everyone. Today we'll be talking about the Administration Council for EPICOR version 10.2. Who knows everything there is to know about the Administration Council or Admin Council for short? Certainly not me. However, today I'll show some common items within the Admin Council and also some changes that have been put into the Admin Council for EPICOR version 10.2. Topics listed here are an outline of what I will cover today. Each topic will be discussed in more detail on the following slides. I will cover regenerating your data model using the Admin Council, regenerate your data model using a command line option, telemetry tracking, which is new in 10.2 and automatic token authentication configuration and then review a couple of these items in EPICOR 10.2 itself. This way everybody can get a better understanding of how to use the admin council. The first two items can be done in earlier versions of EPICOR 10 also. For anyone who might be fairly new to the admin council you need, will need to regenerate your data model if any Custom fields are added to EPICOR using the extended UD tables maintenance menu item or if you own the software developers kit and have added tables slash fields. There are a few different ways that you can complete the same process but the one I use is shown step by step here. I have highlighted the click the generate button since the process looks like it is running with a progress bar even though it is doing nothing once you have started the regen generate data, mo data model step until you click that generate button so don't forget to click the generate button so the basic steps are to exit EPICOR 10 and have all users log off stopping the task agent for the particular environment that you want to regenerate the data model for and in the EPICOR Admin Council, the path is shown here. Stop the application pool, again in the EPICOR Admin Council, and the path is shown. Regenerate the data model. This actually synchronizes the data between the SQL backend and the EPICOR database. And that usually can take, depending on the size of your database, could take 5 to 15 minutes and even longer if you have a really big database. Once that's done you'll get a message to say that the data model regenerated successfully and then you can reverse the process to start the application pool and then restart the task agent service for the particular environment that you were working with. And then you can allow users to log back into EPICOR Town. So the EPICOR documentation says there's a way to regenerate data model from the command line. When I did this live presentation, I was not able to get the steps to work. However, just recently I was able to get them to work. And so hopefully we'll be able to get that into this actual recording. So there's a few setup tasks that you need to do before you can generate your regenerate your data model using a command line option. First you need to modify the config file shown in this bullet point here using notepad and changing the generate all and the store in D DB settings. EPICOR recommends these both be set to true. Do you want to generate all the data models in this environment or only the data model that matches the current system code. I think this means all companies and plants in the EPICOR environment. Next you'll you'll modify the sysconfig file. You should probably just make a copy of another, an existing one but take everything out other than the first line and then the customizations. Well actually I think just the configuration tags you need and then you would put in settings, tool settings, tags, and the information in between as shown here. 
and of course you would replace the my user with your actual username that ha that would be where the temp data would get stored. Finally to actually run the command line option you'll open a PowerShell or Windows command window and change the directory to the client path where the data model generator execute is located. So that would be this first bullet point here has the command for changing the directory in, in our case to where we have our data model generator .exe located. And then you enter the command line shown with the dash config option as an optional parameter if you have customized your sysconfig file to use the tool settings shown on the previous slide. You will then see results in the command line window if you don't have this last section about showing the results in a, a log file instead. So if you stopped right after the quotes, the results would show in your command line window. In addition to the command line option, there's a desktop shortcut option and an option to set the regeneration as a recurring task. Since they both rely on the same type of setup for the command line option with additional options added to them, I will not be showing those options today. Telemetry tracking. During the install of Epicor 10.2 or after installation, you can choose to opt out of telemetry tracking. This is especially important if you have government contracts that don't allow tracking analytics. Epicor states telemetry tracking is in, is in place to troubleshoot issues, analyze trends, and improve products and services. Unless you opt out, Epicor will automatically collect and process general licenses, usage, and non-personal telemetry data. This data includes date and time of access, IP addresses, computer slash browser types, active features, and performance metrics. Data collected is non-personal, non-identifiable, and subject to the Epicor privacy policy, which is hereby included by reference. If you choose opt out, Epicor will not collect telemetry data. However, it will continue to collect general license data and module usage inf information. Automatic token authentication configuration. New in Epicor 10.2, Epicor can use automatic token authentication. Epicor's token authentication is now configured automatically during application server deployment. If you have issues with automatic configuration, you can run the option manually. During setup, if you get a warning that the system was not able to set up token authentication when you deploy an application server, this does not affect the deployment of your application server and the server will still be installed correctly. To set up token authentication manually, use the configure token authentication option either in the action menu or in the action pane that displays for the application server. Now we can take a look at the admin console in Epicor 10.2. So here we can see the configure token authentication if we needed to manually do that for the E10 environment. And we have the option to use the admin console to regenerate the data model and the option to use the command line to regenerate the data model. However, since it takes quite some time, like I mentioned before, 5 to 15 minutes for each one, I'm going to go ahead and use the command line to show you that option since you may already know the options that you need to use Epicor Admin Console. So right now we can see that I have a recently added UD column to our company table and 
after the regenerate model is done both of these buttons should be green you can see they're not both green even if I refresh or anything so we're gonna go ahead and do the command line option to uh, regenerate the data model so first step is to close Epicore and make sure nobody else is using that environment so that you can go ahead and regenerate the data model and start and stop the task agents as needed. So next you're going to start a command window. And I'm not sure if it's needed or not, but I'm going to go ahead and use the option to run as administrator. Then I'm pasting my line about changing the directory so that I'm at the location that has my data model generator executable file that's CD change directory and then the path that has your data model generator executable file next I'm going to paste the actual run configuration options for the data model generator so I have data model generator executable with config equals and then the path of where I want my or where my sysconfig file is and then I included a option to output the data to the data model log file and I'm going to actually go back and name this data log 2 since I did this earlier and press enter and it looks like it's not doing anything here but eventually it will be and it, it as I mentioned it might take you know 5 to 15 minutes in general I think ours was taking the 15 minutes or a little longer so through the magic of recording we'll be fast forwarding when it's done so you can see the results but in the meantime I can go to that location that I said the log is so that we can see that it's at least already started doing the log so that's in our C drive a logs folder and here we can see the one that I just started was data model log 2 and right now it's just gonna say that it's doing the synchronization when it's all done it has more information in there actually we can look at the one I did earlier you can see that it shows information about how long it took for different items to run etc so I did find when this did succeed that I still had to go and stop the application pool stop the task agent stop the application pool restart the application pool and restart the task agent in order for the fields to be in sync so for now we'll just let it run and I'll be back in 10 minutes or so and then we'll take a look at the database results before stopping and starting the application pool and task agent and then after stopping and starting the application or the task agent and application pool so once the data model regeneration is done it'll come back to the command line prompt that we had showing the path before and we would also see our log file now is longer than it was previously and you can see all the information is in there about the data model being regenerated now we can go to our environment and check and see I expect that our data model did regenerate but it's going to show in our UD table maintenance that it's still not in sync until we
go ahead and stop and start the task agent and app pool as we mentioned previously. So I added my new field to the company table and we can see it doesn't show that it, it shows that it's still not in sync and if we refresh it's still not in sync. So we'll go ahead and close that and there may be a way to do this part by the command line, but I don't know what it is yet. So right now we're going to use the admin console to do it. So in the admin console, we'll go to our environment that we are working with, and we will um, stop the task agent first. and then stop the application pool. We want to wait till it actually says stopped here in red before we restart it again. There we go, it says stopped. Now we can start the application pool. And again, we want to wait till it's green and says that it's started. There we go. And now we want to go restart the agent that we stopped. So we say start agent for the environment that we were working in, which is E10 train. This will take a minute or two. So when it's done, our agent running, our agent shows that it's running and it has the green color indicator. Then we can close this and close the admin console and log back into our training environment, which is where we were working. And we should now see that the database and the fields are in sync. Now it says the table is in sync, and the data model is in sync. And the last column that I added was KS3. So that column is now available to work with in Epicor. That's what the data model regeneration step does. So that concludes our demo portion of Epicor today. So my name is Karen Chanung and I'm a consultant for Coda Bears. Good luck with using the admin console in Epicor 10.2. Thank you.